Hi everyone, my name is Milan, and thanks for tuning in to Music Marketing TV. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to help the channel grow. Welcome to an introduction to DJ Studio. For those who don't know, DJ Studio is a revolutionary, one-of-a-kind tool for creating DJ mixes, mashups, remixes, and more. It's not another live performance-based solution, but rather a DAW for DJs. Its DAW-like editing window allows users to create seamless and customizable transitions between songs. Advanced features like their AI beat grid, stem separation, and auto mixing capabilities allow for endless creativity. It also integrates with your local music library, YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, Rekordbox, Beatport, and more. So without further ado, let's begin creating a mix. To create a new mix, simply launch DJ Studio and select Create New Mix. This will prompt you to draw the songs from a few different sources. I'm going to choose to use my local files just because that's where my music is currently stored on. Once I click that, I'll navigate to my folder where I have all of my songs. Let's do that, here we go. And I can start adding them one by one by hitting this plus sign, or I can just add them all by hitting shift and selecting them all, and then adding all 10 tracks to mix. So right now DJ Studio is gonna analyze each of these songs, find out its length, the key, and the tempo. And this is going to be really important when it comes to using the auto mix feature. Once all of our songs have been added, you can get a view of your playlist in either the carousel tab, the playlist tab, or the classic studio view. Let's take a look at the playlist tab for a second here. So right now you'll see the order in which we added the song. So nothing's changed. Although this might not be the order we want our set to be in. The reason being is because there could be, and certainly in this order I'm looking at right now, there will be conflicts in terms of key clashing and um, maybe not so much uh, BPM spikes, but that is also a possibility. Let's take a look at DJ Studio's auto mix feature and see how their algorithm decides to arrange our set. I'll hit auto mix. We have some different options here, but right now let's just stick with the default auto mix uh, parameters and just click auto mix. Right now, DJ Studio is gonna make a load of combinations for us and suggest the best possible ones. So once that's done, you just hit finish and you'll notice the order of our songs have changed. You can see here that there's this mood column and this pretty much just reflects the type of mixing that's happening. So this green check mark represents a perfect match and that's most likely because it's going from the same key You'll see all these other mood indications as well that reflect what's happening. So we have perfect matches, perfect drops, perfect boosts, energy boosts, scale changes, diagonal mixes, a jaws mix, and a mood change. Based on DJ Studio's algorithm, this is the best possible combination for this set of songs. Now that we have the playlist order sorted, we can jump into the studio tab and begin working on some transitions. You'll see that we have this linear view of our timeline where one song transitions into the next, back to another one, then another one, then another one. This is set up similarly to the classic DJ controllers that we all know and love with deck one and deck two. We also have three sample lanes here that can be used for other creative instances, such as creating mashups. If I zoom into one of these transition blocks here, you'll see what's called the transition window. This transition window can be shifted, lengthened, shortened, and manipulated in numerous ways depending on the transition we're going for. We can also lock this transition window, meaning that if we want to make changes within, within our playlist order, these two songs will always stay the same. And you've probably noticed that we have a playlist view down here as well, which is quite handy. If I want to hide that, I can just hit zoom, and now I've removed all the clutter so I have a good view of my timeline window. Let's explore some of the basic transitions and see what else we can do to make them our own. So by default, it looks like DJ Studio has chosen this setup for a transition. Let's have a listen first, and then I'll explain what's going on under the hood. Okay, so you see that transition is pretty smooth, seamless, and it works well. 
but I did notice that maybe I might have messed this up when dragging around my transition window. But I would like for the transition into the next song to actually start on this beat. So let's just have a listen to this again. Let's go under the hood of this transition and find out what exactly is going on. So I can do that by either clicking on the transition window here or on this transition tab. And you'll notice that by default, DJ Studio has chosen to do a crossfade in volume and a direct swap in bass. That bass swap is re represented by this yellow line here and this other abrupt yellow line up top. The crossfade in volume you'll notice is represented by this white line. All of these features listed under volume are available underneath the other various uh, frequency bands as well. So if we don't want any kind of bass swap, we can just hit none and just let the crossfade occur in its own. But let's try some different ones out and see how they affect the transition. Let's start with a fade in. I'm already not really a fan of that transition just because it's fading in the entire song and it's going to abruptly stop the song that's going out. So I think I'll stick with the crossfade in this instance. Maybe bring that bass swap back. But apart from this equalizer section, there are some other effects we can explore as well, such as the filter, noise, effect in, effect out, and sidechain. Let's look at one of these noise effects here. How about we try a uh, swoosh? Let's see what that sounds like. That's not bad. It helps the transition a little bit better through that midway point where the bass is swapped. We can even try a riser and even dictate the intensity of the riser and where it happens within the transition window. Let's see what this sounds like. Very smooth. Let's take a look at some of the other effects we have here. So we have an effect in, effect out, and sidechain portion as well. Let's try maybe the echo out. I'll use this example on a different transition, maybe something with a more abrupt ending. How about here? So I'll click on this transition window, hit echo out, and you'll see that about midway through the transition, uh, the echo out effect begins. So let's have a listen. So I'm sure you caught that little echo tailing out by the second half of the transition. If you want to see how each track is being affected individually by the transition, you can hit this solo button and it will toggle between the top and bottom track so you can identify the exact changes that are happening within each transition. Let's just solo this echo out and listen to it. That in combination with the default crossfade and bass swap, I think sounds very smooth. Apart from the echo, we also have a reverb, which is similar in the sense where it'll tail out a signal, but not create duplicates like an echo does, but more so just a reverb tail. I'm gonna maximize the intensity so we can really hear what's going on. Let's first hear it in the context of the mix and then I'll solo it. Not bad, let's just solo it. You get the idea. Another interesting effect is the loop in. So this is really useful for songs with short intros. Uh, this song doesn't particularly have a short intro, but you'll get an idea of what's going on. So it's essentially gonna loop this little section that I designate. I'll keep it at one for now, but I'm able to change the duration of the section being looped. Uh, just so that if this were a song that had a short intro, we'd be able to fill up this transition space with more content. So let's have a listen to what that sounds like. Maybe I'll take the crossfade out actually, just so you can hear what's 
exactly going on. And I'll solo it just so you can hear it without anything else. So now you should have a rough idea of what's possible with these basic transitions. Let's dive a little deeper and see what we can do with some stem separation stuff. Okay, so I'm going to use this same transition as the example again. Um, but this time, let's take everything off that we've previously done. So I'll go into my transition tab, the equalizer tab, turn it all off, effects, make sure it's all set to none. And there should be no transition necessarily happening right now. Now that we have a clean slate, let's separate our transition into stems. So we do that by clicking this little box in the top right corner of the transition window. I'll click that. DJ Studio is gonna do its thing. It might take a minute or two. Okay, so DJ Studio has processed the stems and now we can see that within our transition window, each track is broken up into four stems. We have drums, bass, melody, and vocals. We can choose to mute any of these. We can even zoom into the transition window by hitting this plus sign. We can cut these pieces as well if we don't want to use them at all. And then we can now start to create our own kind of custom crossfades and blends between these stems. So what I'll do first actually is because I want this to sort of transition into the first drop here, I'm just going to drag this over to the end of the transition window so that when it does transition, it transitions into this intense part right here. And because this song ends about midway through the transition, I'm just gonna drag this out so that we have a little more content to work with to actually make the most use of the stems as possible. So this sounds about right. Oh, we'll let DJ Studio split its stems again just because I've sort of dragged. It's got to reanalyze the audio. So we'll let it do its thing. Okay, so let's re-initiate our stems again. And you'll see that we have content within the drums, bass, uh, melody, and vocals of the outgoing track. Nothing really in the bass of the incoming track, so we can mute that actually and begin customizing this transition. So if we go back to the transition tab, under the equalizer and effects tabs, you'll notice a stems tab. So now we can start to make use of this. So under drums, we can maybe do a swap of the drums if we want. That'll sound something like this. A little abrupt, so maybe a crossfade might be better. Let's listen to that. I think I like that. Not only can we access stems within the transition window, but we can actually extract any stem from the raw file itself. To do this, you right click on the track and you have the ability to split acapella and instrumental. That's one way to do it. We can also do this by holding shift, selecting a region and choosing any one of these options below. For now, I'm just gonna split the acapella and instrumental. So right click on the track, hit split acapella and instrumental and it's gonna pop up in one of these sample lanes below. So as mentioned previously, there's two decks, but there's also up to three sample lanes that can be used for what we're about to indulge in right now, which is mashups. So let's take a bit of this vocal, for instance. Let's just try this. I'm gonna solo this quickly so it doesn't clash with anything else. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time. Got to Okay, so we obviously have the acapella here. Let's take these, this, this section right here, and let's try and mash it up with the previous song. So what I can do is place my cursor here, hit Command E, place it here, hit Command E again, and now I have the little section that I want to work with. I'll just go ahead and delete both of these pieces. 
And if you remember, we split the acapella from this instrumental. So right now this instrumental has no words. We can go ahead and revert it to its original file. That way we can maintain the vocals within this file as well. So let's grab this little vocal piece we separated from this song here and let's try and blend it in with a section within the previous song. Maybe somewhere here, let's. Okay, I think that's a great place to start. So why don't we just drag this over? And now obviously there's gonna be two vocals clashing here. So what's handy about this little sample lane or any, any sample you drag into here is you have the ability to mute stem in main track. So once we hit that, it's gonna take its time to analyze again because it has to split the vocal in here uh, so that we can mute it for this particular section. So we'll let DJ Studio do its thing. Okay, so now that it's done what it had to do. Let's give this a listen, see if it matches. Okay, so that's obviously starting a beat late. So let's drag it in and see if that works. So that works. It was a little abrupt, but it's still perfectly tempo matched and can definitely fit. Let's try and extract the vocal from this song we're currently working on and maybe mash it up with the other song. Again, to do this, we can split the acapella and instrumental. It'll pop up in the next sample lane. And why don't we take the part where she goes, you got me. So maybe even just this very first one will work. Let me just give that a play. Okay, that works. So we'll let DJ Studio do its thing real quick and then we'll chop up the section we want to use. Okay, so now that it's done its thing, let's chop up this little sample. I'll put my cursor where I want to cut it, hit Command D, and then I can delete the rest. Let's take this off solo and let's drag it over here. And why don't we put it at the start of the next drop? Right there, let's see how that fits. And once again, we'll mute, we'll hit mute stem and main track. That will mute the vocal of the instruments we're working with right now. Okay, let's hit play and just see if that fits. I like that. Even the echo in the original file is really nice. But I'd rather have it kick in maybe again here. So what I can do is shorten this, hit Command D, and duplicate it. Let's see what that's like. We've got it going twice now. And then it blends right into the original vocal. As I mentioned earlier, vocals aren't the only thing we can extract from each song. Let's try and take some drums from this one and see if they fit in the previous. To do that, hold shift, select the region. Oops. Select the region you want to use. I think this might be enough. And just hit copy drums. We'll let DJ Studio do its thing. Okay, now that we've extracted the drums, let's see if they can fit with the previous song. I have my sample here. I'm just gonna drag it over and let's find a section where we can maybe swap the drums and have a listen to that. How about right here where after she goes, you got me again, let's see. Oh, never mind. Okay, let's just try this section. I thought she was singing here, but let's see. 
So same thing as before, to swap in the drums, we just have to mute stem and main track. It'll mute the drums and apply these ones we have here. So let's see how that sounds. We can even get creative, maybe swap between both drums every so often. Let's try this. Let's give that a listen. A little abrupt, but definitely works. It fits right in with the beat grid. Before we move on, I want to show you an example of a mashup between two completely different songs, just to show you how effective the tempo sync truly is. For this mashup, I'm going to create a new mix, import my local files, and find the songs I want to use. Luckily, these are already in the same key, so I won't have to do any manipulation to the vocal to make sure that it harmonically fits. Let's add both of these to the mix. And I'm not going to auto mix or anything like that, given that there's only two songs and that I'm using this for a mashup. So none of that really applies right here. But what I will do is take the vocal from this 50 cent song. And put it over top of this classic disco song. Let's give that a try. So to split the vocal, we follow the same steps as before. Now that I have the vocal split, let's drag it underneath the song that we're trying to mash up with and see how it fits. Okay. Okay. So let's listen to the vocal just in solo first. Put my cursor at the beginning, or we can hit that. Okay, so I kind of like that one, two, three, let's go. Let's try and line that up with a place that makes sense with the above track. Let's see. Okay, maybe right here. Let's see. Okay, so it looks like the chorus started a little early in the track above. So I'm what I'll do is give myself enough space by duplicating this region here so that it can sync with when 50 cents lyric finishes. So I'll select the region, hit command D, and we should have a seamless loop of this now. Let's just make sure that works. Okay, let's see it in the context of everything together. Okay, and then I think this is a great place where we can probably cut 50 cents vocal. Let's have a listen again. Very seamless. And now we have the remainder of this track continuing. So you can see that the creative possibilities are truly unlimited. We also have some effects that we can apply to these samples. I'll go through a few of them so you can get an idea. Let's take a look uh, at this sample that we just used again, a 50 cents vocal and add some reverb to it. So I'll have to select the clip. If I'm not already here, then navigate to the effects tab down here. And let's begin applying some reverb. Maybe something a little gentle, not too crazy. Let's give it a play. Okay, 
Apart from reverb, you'll see that we have an echo effect, a flanger, a filter, a little three band EQ, a master volume control for the sample, a bit of compression and some gain as well. There's a noise control also if we want to add some more color to the sound and we also have the ability to change the pitch of this recording. But luckily since both of these songs we're using are in the same key, then there's no need for us to change the pitch of the vocal. As you heard, it fits rather seamlessly. Apart from the effects tab, you'll notice that a few others down here, like the track, which gives us some parameters over each individual track, the transition that we're already well familiar with, the playlist, which is similar to the playlist tab up top here. Uh, we also have a zoom, which pretty much just focuses entirely on your timeline here it's to remove the rest of the clutter. Uh, a master section, all of the samples we've imported and used in the past, and also a video tab. So this video tab is useful for when trying to create visuals for your set. And based on the style you choose, the visuals will change. So let's explore some of these. This is style two here. Let's give it a play and see what that looks like in this little video screen down here. I'll cycle through some of the styles as well so you can see. So you can see there's this ginormous list of different styles here. When you select random, it's going to cycle through the list of the various styles and it'll change based on the duration you set. So it can either be 8, 16, 32 or 64 bars. Um, and that's for the animations. We can also include album art, a video if we, if we had, if it was maybe a music video, it would seamlessly transition from one video to the next. Images we can add and a color if we just wanna use any simple color. There's also this shader toy tool, which is pretty advanced. And what it does is yields these 3D like animations. Okay, so let's recap a bit what was covered. So we learned how to add songs to our mix, use the auto mix feature to arrange the perfect set list, Explored some basic transitions, some more advanced transition types through stem separation, how to extract vocals and other stems from each individual track, and how to use those to create some interesting mashups. The one thing we didn't explore yet is exporting. So let's look into that now. Once you're satisfied with your mix, you can export it by hitting the big export button in the top right corner. Within the export window, you'll notice a few options we have here. The ability to export as an MP3 or a wave, to re-pitch the audio, use the limiter that we've set here that'll shield us from going above this ceiling. We can split the mix into separate files and export the cue sheet. This is really useful for when burning your mix onto a CD. We have some video parameters here if we were to export with a video, the ability to export to DJ software like Rekordbox, publish directly on Mixcloud, an Ableton Live export if we wanna dive into Ableton and do some further edits. You can choose between a horizontal or vertical setup and you'll notice the horizontal will be similar to how it's arranged within DJ Studio already. And then you can also export a backup here. Once you're satisfied with all your settings, just hit export. Thanks for watching this introduction to DJ Studio and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, as we've only scratched the surface today. More advanced DJ Studio content is on the way, so stay tuned. Get inspired.